Morning. Morning. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> oh no. Little Bleep is going to sing. No, not singing. <laughs> <laughs> we will. Um, okay, that used to be a family thing. We used to do with our Rock kids <laughs> singing some Queen around the table with the. That was good fun. Uh, right, well, we're bleepers on a couch drinking coffee. Beautiful Wednesday morning. It's nice and early. And uh, before our day gets started, we like to do this little 10 minute, 12 minute, 15 minute thereabouts chat with you guys. And what are we talking about today? We are carrying on from yesterday where we said, take it to the wall. Um, and which is carrying on from one of the earlier podcasts that says, put you got like goal setting, put it up on the wall somewhere. Um, and then so we, we, we call it, you know, don't talk. Don't. No, no, I'm on the roll this morning. <laughs> I can feel it. Um, <laughs> talk to the hands. We, we bought, we, we bought a roll of paper. Butcher's paper, like a, yeah, what is it? Is it butcher's paper? Is that what it um, is? It, you can get butcher's paper or brown paper. I don't like the brown paper. It feels a bit wrappy, packaging wrappy. So Ikea has white, rolls of white, like wider paper. So I like the white paper. But when we're starting a project or we're about to do something sort of significant. Take it to of, the wall. Mostly a project. We're talking about it like this. And then we get, we we're in conversation, you end up going around and around and around. So we... Um, got the paper and put like literally two meters strips all along the wall and started writing down everything we were talking about and um so so our workroom has a very big wall like it's probably uh five meters by three three and a half four meters and 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 it's true if you work from home it's not very attractive but it's really really effective yeah and um well, I think I used to like working on whiteboards. Mm. I, I'm a big whiteboard fan. Yeah. And in all my offices I ran and we ran teams, yeah. I always had a, I, I always bought a massive whiteboard, which I had part of it ruled up to track the daily stats of all the guys. Yeah. But I also had half of it left blank to write up my morning meetings. I had a morning meeting I ran every morning. And I, I think I've got really used to that. But what I found when Amanda started doing this was actually Amanda's idea. She got this paper and she rolled it out and stuck it on the wall. Which is why I'm on a roll. No pun intended. <laughs> so um, what I really like about it is that we write up stuff f- like on day one when you start working. So let's say we're talking about a new project and we've got a new client and we work on that client's thing. Up on roll one goes the client and then we talk about what the client does and we write down... Um, who are the people involved and then we write down what do they sell and then we write down who their customers are and then you know we might have two or three pages up like uh what are we talking about 40 centimeters wide by about six feet long we had this particular client that we had a couple of months ago was a real estate client who had who we started doing one thing for and then we realized that there's a whole lot of stuff that's missing so we ended up with like... Well, they had no brand. Yeah, they had no brand. So we're like, well, how can we market with no... We're not, we've got no message, got no clear message. Um, so then it was literally probably 20 metres of paper was up on the wall. Yeah. Um, but what happened was that actually sits there staring back at you. And I know that sounds a little bit creepy, but the fact that it's written up there and it's there, we'll use the word permanently. Yeah. And it's not erased, like on a white. Yeah, you get to look back at things and go, "Oh, that's right," and and you make correlations between things. And what we realised was, and this is just—I don't even know this is true, but like you know, we're to like average IQ. But I did a fair bit of research on how IQ works and stuff, and I think that very intelligent people, like one fifty, one sixty IQ, they can hold everything on that wall. On the wall of their mind. And so they can just access it backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. So what we found was since we could put it all up on the wall and leave it up on the wall, it allowed us access to this data we did two or three days ago. And magical things start happening. You start to see correlations you didn't see before. Well, I think you you get a lot of clarity quite quickly about what direction you should take. So, um... 
if you've got something or if you've got an issue and you're just having a conversation about it with different people, you just end up going around and around in circles and it's just, it doesn't get you anywhere. So, um, you, when you, when you've got a problem or something good, you need to get clarity on it, take action. And this comes back to, um, this leads into taking it to the wall, leads into creating content and how you get that consistency. Um, and which is our second topic for the day, which is done is better than perfect. So this is the big bleeper because I'm a perfectionist. So I am willing to work on, um, content for hours and hours and hours, start, stay up all night yeah, well and to I, get it right before I publish it. Well, I didn't invent it. That is it. not what you do. Well, no, the problem with Amanda is that she doesn't get it right ever. So she's never happy. She just keeps looking at it and going, no, I could make that better. I could I could make make that better. That. Now, what if I change and we'll get it finished and it looks fantastic. And then she'll go, what if I changed all the colors to this shade? And then back we go again. And, and if I let her have her head, we literally never get anything finished. So, um, because she just wants to make it better and better and better. Now, I didn't come up with this idea. It was actually something I read um, only a few months ago. It was actually one of the guys out of America I've done some training with. And he, he said, done is better than perfect in digital marketing because you've got so much to do every day. And as I said, these, these little 10, 15-minute um, vlogs we're doing, this is a three-hour commitment per day. You know, I've got to put aside three hours a day so you can put aside 10 while you're having your coffee yeah. to listen to something that hopefully will help you today. Yeah, but hopefully you get some value out of this, even though it's taken me an enormous amount of time. And we've had our first call um, off the, the vlog the other day, which is really about two months early. It should take three to four months for this stuff to start working. But someone's hit our website, there's been a link on our website to our vlog, and they've listened to one and thought, you know what? I want to talk to these guys. So that's exactly how it should work, and that's exactly what it should do. Now, when that happened, how do you think I felt about the three hours? I wasn't upset about the three hours at all, whereas the day before I was saying, oh, gosh, this is is a bit of work, you know. But um, done is better than perfect has become a little bit of a motto with what we're doing. And so when, when we start bogging down into, oh, gosh, you know, how good does it have to be, the question, the sorry, the answer to that question, how good does it have to be, is it has to do what it's supposed to do. So if you're making a video and your goal of that video is to gain trust, introduce the owner, um, have them you know just talk about something and give a face to the name, a face to the business, you can do that on an iPhone. You can do that in about two hours worth of video shooting. And you can do it pretty much all yourself. You don't even need professionals to do it. Now, um, I help our clients with that sort of stuff. I'll just bring my gear down. I've got I've got microphones and gear, and we can just do it pretty quickly. And we don't charge a fortune for that sort of stuff because what we're really trying to do is um, get the content out because the content makes a big difference, and we've got to get it out quickly. So. Don't get bogged down each day in things that are just not going to get a result. And yeah, and we have said in a couple of podcasts ago that you need really to 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 get to have shares and to to maximise your free platforms like Facebook and Instagram. You need really good kick ass content. That is true, but if you're at the beginning of this journey and that's all you're doing, it doesn't. I will say it doesn't really matter. Just start start thinking about what you should be doing and start doing it at least. And then when you get extra information or you get some help about what to do, you can tweak it and sharpen the pencil and get better at what to post. But just getting a habit of posting and thinking about it, thinking about your business in a digital way is a good place to start. Well, I mean, obviously... Who's the best content creator in the world? Red Bull. Red Bull. And right. Netflix. Well, obviously Netflix <laughs> now. Netflix has won the won the um, the title of best content creator, but they're actually not a traditional content creator. Yeah. Not 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 what we're talking about. Yeah. But Red Bull is 
the number one content creator in yeah, the world. Masterclass at content, and they were doing it before anybody else yeah. knew what what we were supposed to be doing. Yeah, so, some someone in Red Bull, some either the marketing agency yeah. or someone inside Red Bull was a visionary. Just worked out, you know what? We're selling this super addictive sugary drink that's probably going to kill everyone, and we're going to get sued in twenty years' you time. You may as well be jumping on a plane doing it. Let's let's connect it not to sugary drinks and making you feel good. Let's yeah. connect this drink. The ultimate human experience. Yeah, to the best human experience. Yeah. Let's you know, and then they had that stupid campaign about Red Bull will give you, will give you wings, wings, which I thought was terrible. But we still remember it. We still yeah, well that's part of advertising. Do you remember it? Yes. <laughs> it cut massive cut through because it was so stupid. What the hell are that? Yeah, mean? and and, so. and people flying. But where they have absolutely nailed it is taking any extreme sport and sponsoring it, and getting the rights to film it. And, you know, I was watching, you know, I, I, can, I can name dozens of them. Big wave surfing. You know, you're watching this, this unbelievable clip on YouTube about big wave surfing, yeah. and suddenly at the end it says, content by Red yeah, Bull. Jump, the guy jumping out of the helicopter yeah, the, to ski down the... You can only get there by helicopter. He jumps out of the helicopter yeah. to... to Ski yeah, down the road. sponsored by Red like, Bull. Oh. The the tinny races in Adelaide on the Murray River. Yeah, you know, racing between fallen trees and like it's it's deadly dangerous. It's super high speed. They put like huge motors on the back of these little tinnies. The thirty centimeter track bike track. It's up and down. And yeah. it's got cliffs on both sides, and it's like you're watching it. And you're yeah. going, oh my god, what's the, doing? the guys, the guys that jumped <laughs> out so of so many of them. The guys that jumped out of the, the planes without a parachute and did mm. the wing the wingsuit the thing. The wingsuit thing, yeah. You know, so like um, um, wakeboarding on a ah, oh, what is that? It's a it's um I don't know. What do they make that American drink out of? The berry? It's a it's a, anyway, the, these berries grow in this pond and they float on the top of the pond. And they wakeboard on it. You can look it up on YouTube, it's amazing. It's a it's a half an hour special. All about wakeboarding on this silly pond filled with these gooseberries or whatever they're called. They make these drinks out of. Um, anyway, but Red Bull, if you want to, if you want a masterclass in how to create content, Red Bull is the absolute king of it. Yeah, check out some of their videos if you haven't already done it. But the point of raising that is, we can't all create Red Bull content. Okay, that is impossible. You won't have the budget for it. You won't have the time for it. You won't have the skills for it. It's impossible. And if that's going to be your level of, I need this content to be successful, you will fail over yeah, and over again. You'll never do it. This blog that we're doing right now is simple. It's easy to do. It's and done and it's better than perfect. It's done and it's better than perfect. And with that, we'll say adieu. I am... The big bleeper. I'm the little bleeper. See Have you a later. great day.